We have to show a complicated PN statement and prove it by using the mathematical induction. As you can see, the PN statement says 1 over 1 over 1 times 3 plus 1 over 3 times 5 plus 1 over 5 times 7 plus all the way until the very last term, 1 over 2n minus 1 times 2n plus 1 is equal to n divided by 2n plus 1. So first we're going to write P1 statement, then we're going to write PK statement, and then we're going to write PK plus 1 statement. So P1 statement reads this. P there are n terms on the left side. So P1 means that the subscript is 1, the n value is 1. So we're talking about the first term only. 1 over 1 times 3 is going to be the only term written on the left side when you're talking about P1. And on the right side, obviously, we're going to set n value of 1, just like we did for the subscript here. So that's going to be 1 over 2 times 1 plus 1. And we're going to verify this later. We're just going to write this out these uh, statements out. PK is the same as this except we substitute n with k. 1 over 1 times 3 plus 1 over 3 times 5 plus 1 over 5 times 7 plus all the way until the last term. Instead of n we write, we write uh, 2k minus 1 and then 2k plus 1, and this is equal to k over 2k plus 1. And finally, pk plus 1 statement is going to be similar to this, except we're going to substitute this with k plus 1. And this is going to look very messy, right? So it's going to be 1 over 1 times 3 plus 1 over 3 times 5 plus 1 over 5 times 7 plus this, plus, now this is going to be huge. Uh, so we're going to have brackets, so 2, so instead of n, it's going to be uh, k, instead of k, it's going, to k, it's going to be k plus 1, k plus 1, and then minus 1. Okay, I'm going to use two brackets, of course, because we're talking about a product, and this is going to be 2 times k plus 1, right? plus 1, close, plus 1 after that. All right, this is indeed messy. Is equal to, and this is going to be a little simpler, but still pretty messy. So we're going to substitute with this with k plus 1. And this we're going to write 2 k plus 1 plus 1. All right, so that should be clear. Okay, so uh, we, we showed all three statements now. Now we have to prove P1. So P1 holds true since 1 over 1 times 3 is 1 third. And the right side, let's show that to be 1 third as well. That's going to be 3, um, 3 plus 1. No, it's going to be 2 times 1, that's 2, right? So 2 plus 1, so that's going to be 1 third. Bingo, right? So we showed that indeed these two sides are equal, right? So P1 statement is shown to be true. Now assume PK statement is true for arbitrary K value. So k value will act in the same way as the n value. Somewhere there will be a, some arbitrary k value for which this sequence will stop. Okay? And at that k value, the right side would be evaluated. So we assume this statement will be true. We can't prove it. We're going to just assume it. Under that assumption, we're going to build the statement for pk plus 1. So under this assumption, we can build statement k plus pk plus 1, and we're going we're gonna to write 1 over 1 times 3 plus 1 over 3 times 5 plus 1 over 5 times 7. And then the reason why we work under the pk assumption, pk statement assumption, is because we have to write this, the last term of the pk statement, the left side. Right? We have to include that. 
2k minus 1, 2k plus 1. And then we have to add this messy term. Okay, we have to add this messy term. Unfortunately, I'm going to try to squeeze it in as best as I can. 2. And why do we write that? We write that because this is a pk plus 1 statement. Okay, so k plus 1 minus 1, right? I'm just copying this over, times 2 k plus 1 plus 1, right? Plus 1, closed, okay? And then that will be equal to Let's see, what is that equal to? Let's you just set it equal to that, right? Because we're talking about the same pk plus 1 statement. So k plus 1 over, and let's simplify that. 2k plus 2 plus, plus 1, that's going to be 2k plus 3, right? So that, let's just simplify it that way. This means that, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to compare this I'm going to compare this statement left side precisely with this left side so notice everything looks pretty much the same from here to here is the same as from here to here except we don't see this guy we don't see this guy on the left side of the pk statement. So in order to make this pk plus 1, we're going to have to add this guy on both sides of this pk plus 1 statement. So we can say this means that um, this means that pk plus 1 can be written as 1 over 1 times 3 plus 1 over 3 times 5 plus 1 over 5 times 7 plus uh, this guy. 2k minus 1, 2k plus 1, and then we're going to add one more term, this term here, plus 1 over, again, the messy part here. I'm not, I'm not um, simplifying this on purpose because I want to make this look like the way it is so that you know where it came from. I don't want to simplify anything just yet. So pk plus 1 minus 1 times... 2k plus 1 plus 1. Okay? And that is equal to the right side of the pk statement. And also, don't forget, since we added this guy on the left side of the pk statement, we have to add it on the right side as well. So we're going to have to just... Uh, I'm going to try to actually add it like this. Okay, so I'm adding this on the right side so as to not waste time. So now what happens is what we're going to do next is that we're going to have to, we already showed that these two sides are equal for the pk plus 1 statement, right? These two sides are equal. These are the left sides. However, however, we have to show that this we have to show that this is equal to this right side, right? Because these are the respective right sides of the same alleged statement of pk plus 1, right? So if we show the right sides being equal as well and not just the left sides, we will show pk plus 1 statement being true. And thus, that will be the completion of the induction step that is necessary to prove that pn is true for all n, okay? So let's show the right side can be transformed algebraically. It's a mess right now, but believe me, it is possible. So the right side is, and I'm going to write this, and I'm going to try to transform this. So k over 2k plus 1 plus 1 over 2k plus 1 minus 1 times 2 times k plus 1 plus 1. Okay? So, how do we transform this? It's going to be messy, right? So, we're going to have to first get rid of this mess. Right? So, we don't touch the first fraction. Just rewrite it. And then plus, now let's see what this is going to be. 1 over, this is going to be 2k plus, plus 2 minus 1. 
so we're gonna be we're gonna have this right so so we're gonna have uh let's see so we're gonna have 2k plus 1 here as a result and then this is going to multiply 2k plus 2 plus 1, so 2k plus 3. So now you might say, oh, how do I make this whole thing into the single term? It still looks like it's a remote possibility, but believe me, it is possible. Notice that we can combine this into a single fraction still. We can do that. We can do that. To combine this into a single fraction means that this denominator is 2k plus 1, but this denominator also has 2k plus 3. So we need to multiply this by 2k plus 3. Right? So 2k plus 3 plus 1, and then that's going to be divisible by both denominators like we want it. 2k plus 1 and 2k plus 3. Okay, bingo, right? So this is already a single fraction, right? So it's getting it's gonna go into this eventually. Right? So now we can actually um, we can actually split so the idea is to basically in the end we need to have only 2k plus 3 denominator so that means we need to somehow get rid of 2k plus 1 so in order to get rid of that on the top we have to have 2k plus 1 multiplying something to cancel it out right because otherwise we can't so how do we do that? We have to derive 2k plus 1 factor on the top somehow. So to do that, first realize that you, that you can write this as, you can split this guy as 2k plus 1. Write 2k plus 1 and actually write it plus 2 and then plus 1. You can do that way and that's going to work. Right over 2k plus 1 and 2k plus 3. So once again, notice I'm splitting the 3 here into 1 and 2. And the reason why is because we're going to have uh, basically 2k plus 1 multiplying the k. Okay? And then as a result, we will also have 2 times k plus 1 again. Right? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to basically separate 2k plus 1 with a k being multiplied like this. And I'm taking the 2 out. But if I take the 2 out of this, I will have to still multiply it by k. Right? So I'm going to write 2k as a result. Right? Because this 2 that I'm taking out is still multiplied by k. So 2k plus 1, that last 1 there hanging in the end, divided by 2k plus 1 and 2k plus 3. So now we'll look what happens. We have the beautiful common factors of 2k plus 1. The first one multiplies the k, and the second one multiplies the secret 1, right? Because 1 times 2k plus 1 is 2k plus 1. So this means we can write it as k plus 1. We can take the k plus 1 out because we can... This, this is called like factoring by grouping. Like we're grouping k and 1 together because they both multiply 2k plus 1. And then that's equal to 2K, uh, k plus 1 times 2k plus 1. And that is divisible by 2k plus 1, 2k plus 3. Now, bingo, this is what we wanted. We achieved the 2k plus 1 in the numerator. And thus, we can cancel that out. And as a result, look what happens. We get k plus 1 over 2k plus 3. Bingo, beautiful. So we did actually achieve the same result of the right sides. The right sides are absolutely equal. k plus 1 over 2k plus 3. Beautiful. So this holds true. Okay, the right side, well, we can say it holds true. This means, this means, let's copy the, the entire statement, pk, pk plus 1 statement. It's going to be crazy, but... Um, Oh, I hate copying these these uh, statements. Uh, I will just have to do my best here. Uh, I'm just gonna copy this 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 guy. One over one times three plus one over three times five 
plus 1 over 5 times 7 and 1 over 2k minus 1 I'm copying this guy 2k plus 1 uh, plus the troublesome crazy thing here ah oh. okay so 2k 2k plus 1 minus 1 2 times k plus 1 plus 1 thank god I'm done with that <laughs> is equal to the right side right and the right side crazy side we transformed it successfully into this that matches the the short answer k plus 1 over 2 k plus 3 so this means the statement holds true this is pk plus 1 statement right because we showed both sides being equal we showed both sides being equal right we compared pk plus 1 sides the left side and the right side the left side matches the right side matched as well right so we compared both sides are equal so under the assumption that pk statement was true pk plus 1 statement is also true and that's enough that's the induction step that we just completed here so this is pk plus 1 statement thus p uh, by the principle of mathematical induction pn holds true for all and this completes the proof i hope this was helpful thanks for watching see you in the next video